Hi, everybody. Um, is that better? Maddie says I'm slow to the punch, so they gave me a really high sign this time to get started. Um, welcome to the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company live Thursday afternoon live. Um, I'm Tom Matuska, along with Amber Ingalls and Brett Wingfield, Mandy Swart, Kirsten Morris, our little uh, camera lady, and uh, we're going to show you some things today on finishing whitetail. And before we get started, Mandy has a way to do the giveaways. We do. Let's wait till we get a few Wanna more wait people a few watching. More? Okay. Yeah. Um, let me go over then what we did in the weeks past. Yeah. Last week, if you were here, we didn't do we didn't work on the whitetail. Um, we kind of just went from project to project in the shop, and we kind of did a tour of the shop, and we showed them um, Cape buffalo and caribou and sable and fish and molding and uh, bobcat sculptures and bear sculptures and uh, um, crocodile. crocodile, you know, all kinds of fun things that we work on here every day. And uh, I hope some of you, you know, it kind of inspired you to, you know, try some different things because we get into almost everything that you can imagine around here. Every day the phone rings, we get, seems like a new challenge. And just remember that you can always go back and watch our lives, so they are always on our Facebook page if you miss them. So go back, check them out. You can see all the way from last December is when we started doing them every single week, and we've stuck with it. So go back and check those out. Um, and we've got a lot of them by now, don't we? Yeah. Like and comment. Let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to hear from you guys. If you have any questions throughout, comment, and we will try to answer them the best of our ability. You told me to say that. It was in my script. Oh, <laughs> you're out. <laughs> Make sure you comment. Let us know where you're at. You know, everybody likes to see where everybody's from and things like that. Uh, when we worked on the deer, I think the last time um, we did eyes and tucked lips and noses. Is that what we did? Uh, and let him dry. And this is kind of what we ended up with up until now. Um, one thing that I didn't show you, I think after we were off of camera, um, we aligned the ears, got them, why is everybody laughing at me? Oh, Derek, he said, almost sent my order back today. My Reese's was almost melted. It looks just fine in your hand holding it over that picture, mister, but the freezer works perfect. <laughs> uh, but once we got the deer all ready to set aside and let dry, um, something we like to do is take we call this fish this carding is material. Derek's post. And he was pretty excited to get his order with the Reese's. Oh, yeah? No, no. <laughs> uh, we take uh, our fish carding material, and it's actually cross stitch mesh. Mesh is that what it is? Yep. Um, but it's a, a mesh material, and we cut little shapes, and we actually paper clip the edges of the, of the ears to keep them really nice and straight problem with that is it also mushes down your hair and flattens your hair so you want to make sure to bring loft back to your hair but that was one thing I did after we went off camera before we left for the night and uh, other than that I think we let him dry yeah. and um, this is what we have and this is what we're going to start with today is it time yet yeah we can do it now okay so we are going to do something a little different this week and see how it goes, but forward, I think we're gonna do it as well for our giveaway. So what we've done is we have four bags, and each bag has something different in it. You have a sharpened air, you have an easy nose kit, you have a dandy noser, and you have a Matuska tape measure. So at five o'clock every week, we are going to say the winner's name. And they have, your friends hopefully will tag you in it if you're not watching live, but you have 30 minutes to get on and claim your prize at 525. If you do not claim it and pick one of these awesome bags, it goes to somebody else who's watching live. So, you gotta be live to watch. So make sure you pay attention at five o'clock and you'll have a half an hour to tune in to the winner. So we'll announce the winner at five and that'll give them a 30 minute. About 22, 23 minutes from now, you're gonna announce yep. the winner. Yep. Carry okay. on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now, let me put this out here a little bit. Um, the first thing, now you notice when we mounted the deer, 
you didn't see us put in a whole lot of pins. Um, I mean, the most hardware that we really put on the deer is a little bit of paper clips on the ears, um, and that's not really necessary if you're pretty confident in your ears. It's just a, a safety net for us. Um, we did put the saran wrap in the nostrils to hold the shape. Now, we sculpted out those nostrils, if you remember, um, real carefully and as accurate as we thought a white-tailed nostril could be in accordance with our casts and our photos. Um, then, Amber thinned that skin really, really thin around there, so we have a really thin tube of skin, and then we tucked that skin in there with saran wrap. Uh, we used to use tissue paper, like toilet paper, things like that, but if you have any kind of glue in there, it sticks to it. Saran wrap doesn't. So we pushed it in there hard, which forced our skin to take on the inside shape of that nostril. So that's, that's really another one thing we had in there besides the ears. But other than that, we don't have a lot of pins. We used to use pins, we used to use brad nails, we used to use staples. Um, we don't do any of that anymore. We actually mount the deer uh, in the grooming process. We push in all of our detail. If you don't know where that detail is, if you are not haven't mounted a lot, a lot of deer, I remember when I started, I always had another deer form there sure. in a similar pose. And I could see, oh, there's a valley here. I didn't know there was a valley here. So we push out where the molars are, you know, and we get that out. There's a little, little valley here, low spot, a little low up here, and we push that out. But I had to have another deer form to go by until um, after a while you get get pretty good at knowing you know yeah. where. You don't want puddles of glue in here. Um, you only want a thin, thin, thin layer of glue. Um, okay, so at this point, if there is anything, pins or anything, staples, paper clips, take all that off. It should be dry now. Uh, I don't know, what do you think our deer dry within? Two days, they're pretty firmed up in the thin areas and maybe within a week, they're getting real, real dry. If you used a lot of hide paste, Another thing I don't know if we emphasized enough, make sure that your capes are not sopping, sopping wet. We always take our capes after they're softened up and a lot of times we'll put them in the wash machine and spin them out. I, I have had trouble in the beginning of my career with wet, wet capes mixed with a lot, a lot of high paste. If a little's good, a lot you would think is better. Not really the case because all that moisture in the hide mixes with that 10 pounds of hide glue you got in there and it all runs down into your brisket and it can turn pretty sour depending on the height pace you use. Um, so anyway, um, spin them out really good so they're not soft and wet and they will dry much faster on you and a thin layer of hide glue is all it takes. So at this point, um, we like to brush them and we do a little bit of grooming before um, once we get them all sewed up and stapled off, you know, we will push, push this off and we will groom the hair a little bit, but, you know, kind of align your hair pattern so you have hair going where you want it. You'll have some little collects up in here and watch for those. What do you do if the hair won't lay down? Um, when the hair doesn't lay down, I got a story. I had a moose one time and I had a beautician lady working for me. She wasn't a taxidermist and I, had all these recipes for how to make hair lay down. And one of them was take dippity doo. You know, dippity doo, you younger people probably don't know what it is. It's a lot <laughs> like yogurt, only you can see through it and it comes in green and pink and stuff. You guys don't know what I'm talking about, do you? You eat it? No, you don't eat it. No, no put it on your hair. <laughs> but anyway, um, you take dippity doo, like a whole gob of it, and you would smear it on and you would pet the hair that wouldn't lay down. And then the next day you come in and you brush it out and it just, it's gone. It's poof, it's gone. And dippity doo, if it didn't work with dippity doo, it couldn't be done. We did it on all our seams. We slicked our deer down. A lot of people still do. A lot of you tax service out there, you know what I'm talking about because you slick your deer down. Um, then it was somebody had uh, Elmer's glue, paint on Elmer's glue, smooth it all down. Next day come in and brush it out. Um, I didn't fall for that one. Another one was rubber latex. Paint rubber latex on, next day come in, peel it off, your hair's laid down. Mm. Kind of works. So I had this moose with two big collics coming up the neck and I tried everything I knew of. I put gauze on there, I put dippity doo, I put pins to hold it, I wrapped it and everything, nothing. And this lady kept saying, you know, put some condition on, put some condition on. Go away, you old hairstylist. You're not a tax artist. You don't know what you're doing. You know, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, she kept saying, and pretty soon she goes and she gets hair conditioner. 
And I know you know hair conditioner is. And she comes up and she puts it in the squirt bottle, just like this. And my old colic was looking, you know, kind of like that, and I couldn't get it to lay down. And she mixed me up some hair conditioner and she gave it a little spritz. And you could see it immediately took the backbone out of the hair and it just wilted and she groomed it down. And I had worked for days on that spot. And with one squirt, she made it go away. Hence, the fine hair conditioner we carry today in the supply company. It's good stuff. Um, that's my story. Smells good too. Uh, but yeah, it smells good too. It's people hair conditioner. You can use it on yourself. It's good stuff. Uh, it comes in a, what, pints, quarts, gallons, whatever they want to buy. Will that fix my colics? Your color or your color? My colics. Yeah, yeah. it does. Um, <laughs> it, comes, it comes concentrated. <laughs> Um, just put a little, we put it in a spray bottle. We just keep it around here all the time. Don't put it on furred animals because furred animals you want loft. Um, but it works good on haired animals, uh, unless you want to part your fox's hair or something. But we just put a little air conditioner in there with hot water, shake it up, and it just hangs over there, and we use it quite often. Um, then, when I'm ready to start doing finish work, uh, you can do eyes, nose. I don't think there's a real order to how to do it. I like the deer looking pretty good before I start on eyes because it makes the eyes go better for me and I like the eyes looking really good before I do noses or vice versa. You know, you'll have your own order to do things. But um, we like to back brush or quarter brush our hair and animals and to do that, you know, in the mounting process there's a whole lot of dirt and debris and who knows what all in this hair and when I before we started I came and I felt of this hair and it really felt grungy there was high glue residue in it and it just didn't feel good to me um, after you brush it a while it starts to get really soft and really nice feeling um, remember that now I'm brushing it the hair typically is going like this in a drainage type pattern I'm trying to brush it 90 degrees for that and this is going to give your deer a very 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 soft look and we don't want to make him look like he went through a wind tunnel once once you've brushed all the debris out got him cleaned up real good i'm going to groom him remember how your water's got to flow don't groom him back like this now there may be some hair that I want to put some conditioner on. But now this side I did, I have a whole lot of loft in here. This side, I have a touch. He's as flat as a board. What's very interesting is you can take something to measure with and I can put that in there and I'm under a quarter inch of loft on this side. Very, very flat. I can put this on that area that I brushed, put it into the skin like I did, and I'm at three quarters of an inch depth. Now, just think what that does for the size of your animal. Uh, now, we're not gonna leave him all fluffed up. You don't want him, well, some people maybe do, but usually we don't, we don't want him like that. We want him looking really nice and smooth, but if you can break the, the flatness away from it and give some air under that, it helps a lot. So spend some time brushing him, getting that hair broken loose. Um, here's another, another place that's gonna really change the look of your deer is under here. For years, I was buying mannequins and they were coming out. I even had customers say, um, I don't want him with a pencil, pencil nose, you know. What do you mean, pencil nose? Well, what he meant was I was slicking everything back and this was too narrow and he had a really narrow face. Yeah, don't want him alone in pencil noses, you know. Um, to get rid of that pencil nose, so I, I got a whole bunch of deer in and I measured really, really carefully and the deer mannequins I was buying was not far off of what I was measuring. How come mine weren't looking like the ones, you know, fresh killed? And it was because I was not positioning this hair like they do in real life. Up here, you'll get a whole different look of a deer. 
if you brush this hair straight back, which is not typically how they look, compared to if you bring it out over the face. I'm just adding a lot to that. I don't know if you can see on camera, but look at the, the wedge-shaped head that I just turned him into. If it's too much, you can groom it back until you get what you like. Uh, be careful, this is a uh, grooming brush. We have them in several different sizes. We have we have an angular brush like this. They have stainless steel bristles. Don't go over your eyes with them. Um, if you're lucky, they won't scratch, but if you have a, one of the polycarbonate eyes, plastic eyes, they're gonna scratch. So be careful with that. So I would do this whole deer. I won't spend the time doing them all now, uh, but this is how I would do it. And, and what happens if you don't do it enough, if you're, if you're gonna back brush your deer, be committed to follow it through. How long does it take? It takes a long time, doesn't it? Um, you'll get a way nice look if you spend the time doing this but it's not a 10 minute job. It's maybe a couple hour job, isn't it, yeah. or more. And do some today, do some tomorrow as you're working on this deer, do some before you, you know, get him completely finished. And this deer is gonna, the hair is gonna look better and better and better and better. Um, we have a lot of little, uh, do we have any of our little brushes or any of those um, uh, ear brushes? Oh, no, maybe we don't. Detail brush yeah. right there. Even, even these little guys, was that meant for a purpose for you? I usually bend those so they can kind of get I won't straighten it out. Um, but you can get up in areas like this. You can get your, once this comes out, you can get in your nose hairs. Mm -hmm. um, Amber, why did you like that one, Ben? Um, so it kind of fluffs up the hair right here by his eyes. Another thing that I didn't mention when we set those eyes is you'll notice some deer have a huge amount of hairless membrane around there. And you can minimize that when you mount the deer with your two magic fingers just by gently compressing it. Don't make, don't make wrinkles, but by compressing that eye skin together rather than pulling it out like that, uh, you'll save yourself a lot of finish work. Uh, but that's another good, good little tool. Um, little, we got all kinds of little toothbrushes, little wire brushes, all kinds of little um, brushes to clean up. So that's what I would do before I get going. Make sure your ears too, don't forget your ears. And be gentle with this. This works really good on a deer. Um, I am all the way down to the epidermis and I'm scratching pretty hard. If you do it on something like a bear, a fall bear, you're gonna start flaking away the epidermis and you're gonna have dandruff all over, Cape buffalo, African animals, and don't do that. It works good on thicker hair animals. And if you do do it on those animals, just do it gentle. And even on the muzzles of some of the smaller animals, you can start to actually lose some of that fine hair that's up on the muzzles if you scratch it too hard. And don't forget, um, all of these hairs too, um, you can add a lot, a lot. And here again, you're gonna get away from that pencil nose deer by fluffing up that, that hair. Fluff this all up really nice. Now sometimes at this point you're going to notice that, oh no, look what happened, my, my lip pulled out, or look at my tear duct, oh, what are we, what's going to happen now, you know, um, oh, this pulled away from the antler, that's part of taxidermy. As you get better, as you thin more, as you tuck better, as you babysit a little bit better, um, those things won't happen. But as you're finishing, if you find those type of things, don't be afraid to wet that area inject it with a little water. Um, if you need it to soften up better, you can put ultra soft relaxer in it. We do that sometimes. Uh, soak it up, maybe even pull your whole lip out and maybe even tuck your whole lip you know, back in with more glue and finish it another day. Mm -hmm. um, Fix-its are part of taxidermy. The better you get at your thinning and tucking, the less fix-its you're gonna have. Make sure you uh, um, comment, tell us where you're from, all that stuff, how am I doing? <laughs> you have a question here. How much in the mix? I think he's referring to the I would say 10%. And I'm guessing. If I use a squirt bottle like this, and do I have 10 inches there? Do I have like 8 inches there maybe? I'd put in a half inch on the bottom. And, and the conditioner is kind of, it's good because 
when you want to brush it out, you brush it out, it just turns to dust and it's gone. You can blow it right out. It doesn't, it's not something that's going to last. Um, don't forget your ears. Also, ears as far as these ears, I put, we put the plastic on and paper clips. Make sure you get a nice lock to those ears. Is it normal to have a lot of hair in the ears? Um, these white tail mule deer should have a lot of a lot of hair in their ears. If you don't have hair, um, I we had a call a while back where somebody said um, they got their ear back ears or their deer back from the tannery and they didn't have any hair in the ears. I started out that way. I started out every deer I did, the ears were bald, and I thought, oh, it must be an early season or it must be something. And I was taught to blame the tannery for everything. Oh, the tannery did it. Tannery did it. What it was, was after I turned the ears, which I probably didn't turn enough because I didn't know what I was doing when I started out, um, split the lips, eyes, all that sort of thing, salted them. I salted the ears, but I didn't put salt on the inside and salt can't penetrate that cartilage. So you salt them on the outside, salt can't get to that inner skin through the cartilage. So I had to take, I learned to take a handful of salt, put it in the ear sack, rub it back and forth and let the salt set that hair on the inside of the ears. So if you don't have hair, if your hides are tan and are coming back without hair in the ears, it's gonna be a prep issue from not salting them. Good enough. John Block is asking, what brand of conditioner? We use Tresemme is what we sell. Matuska brand? Matuska brand. Yeah. <laughs> the gallon's Tresemme, <laughs> which is the same. Okay, does somebody want to take over? You want to show them something on eyes? Sure. There's a lot to do on this thing, so we'll keep it moving, and I'll turn it over to Amber, and she can show you eyes. Okay. All right. So we're going to go through, and we're... Here. <laughs> and we're going to fix our eyes with some epoxy sculpt to try and get that not so crispy, dried up look back to the eyes. So right now, what happens, before I even mix the epoxy sculpt, what happens is, this is a, an eye from the side. When we mount, we go ahead and we put that skin and we tuck it in right next to the glass eye. Okay, so it's like this. As it starts to dry, that skin starts to shrink and it's pulling away from that glass eye and it leaves a void right next to your eye and it'll, you'll have two voids most of the time on the top it doesn't seem like it does it as much up on the top as what it does on the bottom but on the bottom you usually will end up with a void um, in between the glass eye and the skin now it does make it better if you thin your skin out really really nice and thin you'll have less problems with this but it seems like no matter what, you usually almost always have a little bit of fix it. So we're gonna go ahead and use some epoxy sculpt and we like to mix color in with our epoxy sculpt. Oh my goodness, I got a defective glove. Here we go. <laughs> <We're excited. laughs> and it's not gonna take very much. Are you using the natural epoxy? Yep, this is the natural, just the natural colored epoxy. And to do both eyes, it, just kind of look at the void that you're gonna be filling. You're not gonna be doing a lot of building up on top, you're just gonna be filling down in that space. So to do both eyes, this should be about enough. And actually this will probably be a little bit of excess. Okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it up. I like to mix it up first just to get that part done instead of adding the color right away. And we use oil-based paints to color this. And the reason we do it is so that when later on when we're airbrushing and we're doing some of the other stuff, if you would accidentally nick the eye or whatever when you're taking off stuff and cleaning up, then it doesn't show up. And it just kinda, it makes your painting go a little bit easier. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to use a little bit of brown and then just a dab of black. It doesn't take very much. 
and that's just oil-based paint and we're just going to mix that in and it's just something to give a good base color to our eye okay and once that paint is, I, I put on gloves so that I could do this while mixing the paint in. Once the paint is mixed into the epoxy, you really don't need to have the gloves. The color won't come off after that onto your fingers. So you can go ahead and handle this now and it shouldn't get all over your fingers. Um, I usually use just some kind of a tool to put this in. If you're gonna be using acrylic eyes, don't use a metal tool. That's really, really, really important. We've gotten several calls on that this week as far as um, scratching of the acrylic eyes. The reflective eyes are really, really awesome to use, but do not use metal tools. Um, revert to some kind of a wood tool is fine and brushes. That but wood tool you have there, is that your go-to? The double point of This is, it's, it's a cool, it's a cool so tool. It's a great one. That's an, that was a new one, just random came upon us, but that's the bamboo double pointed tool and it comes in a set of five. Hey Mandy, when Mandy got those, I laughed and scoffed. You, and laugh. Fun of them. you laugh and scoff at everything I've been to you. It is like All right. my favorite tool in the box. Before I put Hand that on, I just noticed that we have a little bit of residue here and that happens when you're mounting from just the clay, glue, whatever. I like to go through and just scrape all that off. Be careful with the scalpel. Again, if you got if you're using acrylic eyes, you can't be scraping on your acrylic eyes with a scalpel. So I'm just kind of going through and getting any of that residue off of the eyes because it's easier to do it now than later on. Okay. I'm just gonna start by taking little tiny bits here. And I'm just gonna take and we're gonna push that right down into that little crack. Anybody out there remember using wax for that process? I do. You do? Mm -hmm. Monica okay. says she misses us and she's getting ready for antelope season. Monica, you say that all the time, but you never come back. <laughs> you never bring dirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't bring any more, we got lots. <laughs> I'll take it. Someone also said you need new yeah. Crocs. I know. Um, the funny <laughs> thing is, he has a lot of pairs. These are the shop Crocs. They are. <laughs> so right along the bottom here is where you'll usually have that void. And then also right up in here is a pretty typical spot to have that void. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push it in. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. We're just kind of getting it into place so we can move on from there. I did come through after I pushed a bunch in and just kind of scraped off the excess. So we kind of have a rough line of where it's going. Now, get a nice clean brush with some water on it and we're, I like to just work it back and forth just to kind of smooth out that epoxy. And right now it looks like there are two separate things going on. You've got your epoxy and you've got your eyelid. Um, we wanna make sure that it appears to be one. And if you would try to paint that, you would still see that line of the epoxy and the eyelid. So we, we wanna try and connect them. And a good little trick to do that. We also don't want our, our eyelid to look like it's connected to the eyeball. So I like to take a scalpel, nice clean scalpel, don't use one that's all gunked up with stuff, and kind of take it and do a chopping motion right next to the eye. You never showed me that before. Oh, Tom. The second thing we're talking this week. What size Crocs do you wear? <laughs> Yeah, Someone's, tens. He wears tens. Uh, <laughs> okay, and all we're doing is we're kind of making that separation between between the glass eye and that epoxy because they aren't one continuous piece of skin. Kirsten, mm -hmm. Jason wants to know what color, what oil paint she's mixing with the epoxy is this, yep. the dark brown and the black. 
The water on the brush won't change the color of the epoxy? It, it does, but it won't wash out the, no, it won't wash out the oil-based paint. So now, now I'm gonna take that really nice clean, and you can see this is a, it's a nice good brush. Your finishing brush, you don't wanna have a, a real big thick edge to it, so make sure you take care of your finishing brush for this. I'm gonna push it up against the eye so it's really, really pushed up in there. And I'm gonna push it down into that little crevice that we created with the scalpel. And now take and drag it back out. And when you drag it out, it's gonna pull that very little amount of epoxy sculpt that you put in there and it's gonna help it connect with the eye skin. And I think those are those angular shaders. Yeah, Which this is my all-time favorite brush. And three eighths, you said? Yep, there's this one and then yep, then there's a smaller and then one too. A soft one. Michelle says why not use the colored epoxy? You could. Yeah, you very well could. There's nothing there's nothing wrong with with doing that. Because we never have the right color. Yeah. Sell it. Just can't go get it. I know. <laughs> okay. She wants she's doing the rest of that. Yeah, we can oh, we're past by. Okay, so this week's giveaway is we are going to do, we're going to try it out, but we have four different prizes in here, but only one winner. So the winner is going to get announced, and if you're not watching live, you don't get it, so you have a half an hour to tune in. So hopefully you have a friend that will tag your name if you're not. Otherwise, it goes to one of our live customers that are watching. So, we have a Sharpen Air, we have a Dandy Noser, we have an Easy Nose set of four. In, those bag, in each bag, do you know which one? Not yet, we'll, we'll empty them out, you'll see we're not lying, but, <laughs> and we also have a Matuska tape measure. So, you have a chance, let's talk about the Sharpen Air, that's probably our biggest one here. Tell me about the Sharpen Air. The Sharpen Air is to restore airbrush needles. Um, you take a bent needle, I mean, we, we did a demonstration on it where we took a folded over needle at the tip, stuck it in, and you twist it just a little bit. It's got one to straighten it, one to kind of polish it, one for the shoulder, um, and it straightens up a needle. I mean, how much is a needle like? Depends on which airbrush, but anywhere from 10 to 30 bucks. We got this one here, and it basically saves money and extending the life of your airbrush needles by up to eight times. Sharpen Air is the first and only handheld device that is designed. And Dozier's Tax Room says, I have already saved enough money by using my Sharpen Air to pay for it twice. They work so you better. can go over and over and over. They work better. So who's so the, the winner? The winner is <laughs> Crystal Miller. You have 30 minutes and counting to chime in. So if you're watching, say something, and at the end you will get to pick which bag at 525. Otherwise, we're gonna give it to one of our friends that are always watching live. It's a good right. deal. Carry on, Amber. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In one of the other videos that we had done, I think we had put in yeah. the membranes at that point. Now another option is is to wait and put your membranes in at the time that you finish. And there's nothing wrong with that. We do it all the time here. So if you're gonna do it that way, I like to go ahead and trim down the membrane. So that is, if the eye isn't turned, this is usually about how much I trim down. I don't have to use that whole thing because this would be hard to try and push all of that into the eye skin. So sometimes I like to come through with a scalpel first and just kind of push into that corner. Again, if you've got acrylic eyes, stay away from the metal tools. And all I'm doing is I'm kind of pre-making a little void there so that that scalpel or so that this, the membrane will slide into place a little bit easier and I won't have to fight it. This is kind of a softer plastic, so if you push too hard on it, you can leave little dents in it, which you can see later on. And then you can kind of put it onto the eye and slide it into place. Now you can take a tool and just kind of push it in where you want it. 
Whoop. There it goes. Um, and it's not quite big enough in the front corner. There was a little bit of resistance there, so I'm just going to kind of pull in. I usually do like to do all of the smoothing around the eye before I put into the membrane, just so that part's done and then there isn't so much other work. Jordan and Lexi are asking about our school and a huge thanks for everybody chiming in and saying how amazing our school is. Um, these three work really hard to be the best instructors and teach you and give you the best foundation to go start your own business on your own. Um, this is Northwest Iowa School of Taxidermy, so we not only have Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company and the studio, we do mounts here, and then we also have the school. So this is a nine-week course, and it's one starting in January. I believe we have a couple open spots. But you can call and talk to Vicki at 1-800-488-3256. we got like four girls enrolled in that class yeah. right now. Ooh, we nice. always had. We also are doing spring. We're doing um, a couple two-week courses. So we have those going if you're interested in those. Um, but look us up online. Call if you have any questions. We can get some packets and school stuff out for you. So that is for you guys. Okay. So now that we got the membrane into place, just kind of take a look at that membrane. A lot of people, when they put these in, they have them sticking out way too far onto the eye, so it would actually be hindering the, the deer's vision. It doesn't go out onto the eye very far, so that's a, that's a big thing. Make sure that, that it's not sticking out too far. You could even come right here, maybe, and just take a look from the very front first. Okay. And now the last little detail, and a lot of people don't do this, but the last little detail would be to put in the carnacle, and that is the little tiny bump that sits right in front of the membrane. And it's a very, very small, insignificant little piece. And I'm just, I just kind of rolled a little piece out on, on my finger. And we're gonna put that in the void right in between the skin and the membrane. Once you get it into place, then you can take your brush again and kind of smooth it over and get rid of some of the harsh edges. It doesn't, don't be hitting it too hard with your brush either because it's really, really easy to distort that really fine piece of epoxy. What's your typical class sizes? We take no more than 12, and Lexi, I'll, I'll message you when this is over and give you all our information, but 12 is the maximum number we take because we like to give our students with three instructors the best hands-on and one-on-one -on -one attention they could get. Okay. Who was the winner? Larry Wiggins missed it. Larry Wiggins, where'd you go? Um, the winner is Crystal Miller. So Crystal Miller still has about... Mm, 15 minutes to no. tune in and let us know she's watching. Otherwise, we're going to give it away to somebody else. All right. So if anybody right. knows Crystal Miller, you can go ahead and tag her if you want to be a friend. Well, then they can't win. I yeah. Well, it depends <laughs> how good of a friend they are. <laughs> All right, Brett. I think you you're up next to show them some deer noses, huh? Okay. So we've got one eye done and half of the deer groomed and we'll yeah. probably get only a quarter of the nose done. But we're gonna, we're gonna show you a little bit. Um, finish is what? Normally we take two or three hours to oh, yeah. do this. It's, it's yeah. something that the better your finish work, the nicer your finished product. I think it makes a big, big difference um, and it shows. Um, this, yeah, this whole the, process is where it comes together. And yeah, starts making this is kind of make it or break it time. Um, so the first thing here to know is we've got a little bit of um, saran wrap staples just to hold it in place um, we're gonna pull all of that out and kind of see what we got see how good a job we did um, sculpting for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh I trust this. Big old there we go um, actually that looks really nice maybe we'll finish this side <laughs> we'll try the other side here too just to see um, but take the plastic out um, get everything out of your way any any debris and so forth. And uh, this, if you guys remember from when we put this deer together, this deer had a whole bunch of 
um, scarring and scabs and, and kind of a real beat up nose. So we're gonna have some repair work to do on this guy today. Um, sneak back over to this side and kind of focus over here. Um, but it looks really good. If you, if you can see in there without doing any work to it, um, you can see the skin lays up here in the front. We have really nice shape. Our septum sits right here. Um, nice shape to the wing here. Um, it looks really good. We've got a little bit of damage down here, a little damage here and here on the surface, and we'll show you real quick how to fix that. But the first thing I like to do is go in and since that hair has all been compressed inside, um, I like to give it some loft and go in with that same angled tool and we'll go around here and just um, work that back and forth. You can see this, all of these little hairs in the nose all serve a purpose. Um, oftentimes that deer can close this down and keep debris, flies, any other critters or creatures or things that he encounters along the way during his daily existence. Kind of keep it out of his nose so it's there to protect him. So we want to loft all that back up and you can see now all of the the hair direction here is all pointed down. So those are all unstuck compared to this side here. Um, also like to spend just a little bit of time around the lip line. And again, that's a cleanup brush that you're using. Yep, yep. And it looks like you're not being soft or gentle. You're kind no, of these, these bristles are really soft. Um, so you can kind of work that and make sure that oftentimes there's just a little bit of glue um, some dry glue, so we make sure that we get all of that out. Um, a little bit around through here, won't focus, won't spend much time on that side, but um, the surface of the nose, making sure to get all loose debris and so forth off of that. Um, we do have a little repair right there. The bed brush sides as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Some of the people were commenting on nicotine membranes may come out of epoxy, and that's a good option too. You can use your colored epoxy sculpt. John Bucci even said use real ones. We've done that before. We've used real yeah. nicotine membranes. I think um, we've got a whole bunch of them in the freezer. We do, yeah. The freezer door. Freeze them, kind of freeze dry. Is there Just, a right way to do it before or after for the nicotine membrane? Everybody's um, different? Everybody kind of does that different. Um, whatever works out for you, you'll try it both ways and, and see what works. Sometimes by putting it in now, you get a real predictable result. Um, you know exactly what you're going to have. Sometimes if your skin isn't thinned well enough, um, your nictitating membrane might shift a little bit during the drying process. Wire brush yep, I just went to wire. I could feel just a little bit of glue in the lip line. And it won't hurt so. the nose? Nope. Nope. I guess I wouldn't scratch, scratch it too hard, but um, it should be real good. So right now I see I've got just a little bit of work I'm going to do right through here, a little bit up in here, um, a little in the front. So I'm going to real quick mix up some epoxy, just a very small amount. This flashlight is really heavy. I hope it helps. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the viewers, is it helping? It's a heavy one. <laughs> um, tiny bit of epoxy, don't need very much. In fact, Amber, I think you've got some left over. Yeah, yeah there's some right over here. Lot. It's all colored. I'm going to use that. That's a little bit easier for me. Um, just going to fix the surface right here. That was, I think that was just a bad spot in the rhinarium or the surface of the nose where it was a little thin. Just gonna brush that out. And can I borrow your flashlight? Oh man, okay. <laughs> Give you a break for a second. Okay, yeah, let's see those bubbles and hearts. And yeah. Thumbs up and kisses and stuff. Okay. Pork oh, pretty good bubbles. Inside. Show us the likes and hearts and let us know you're watching and, and you're enjoying it. Pork Crystal. I Crystal wanna, Miller. Tune in. Somebody tag her. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you will? You know oh, all nice nice the Wow. There's probably a lot of Crystal Millers. <laughs> They're all going to get tagged. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, I've got a little spot right here, a little stitch. In that corner, we're just gonna work some of that epoxy scalp in. Okay, so I think I've got most of the repair work taken care of, just the little bit of broken surface here. I see one more spot I wanna get. And this is that colored epoxy. You got those things on? No, I don't. Oh, because I didn't out. want any uh I didn't want to shine anybody with my headlights. They're perfect. <laughs> Maybe I should be wearing those. <laughs> I think they made me do this nose part because they're picking on my eyes again. They knew I'd have to wear these glasses. <laughs> All right, just a little oh, fix it right there. Why are we crying? What they do? Because Brett's whining about his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. This nose was pretty beat up. Okay. So the next thing I want to do. So I'm going to put a little bit of flesh colored paint on this nose. Um, we're going to use an airbrush quick. This is not a real fine um, detail. We're going to wipe 90% of it off, but we're just going to get enough down in the small cracks of, this, of the rhinarium to help define them. Slide my cart over. What color you got there? Um, this is natural. natural flesh. Natural flesh. Tom Roos, my dad says that your perch is almost ready. Just an FYI. I see you're tuning in. Okay, Kirsten, I'm going to jump across in front of you. Right over here. When I do this, I also like to get down on the lower lip and I'll get really close and I like to spray in the hair down below here. We're gonna wipe all of that paint out of the hair, but if there's any exposed skin or epidermis in the lower lip, it's nice to give it just a little bit of a flesh tone. Um, Especially in your early season here, it seems yeah. like they're a lot yeah, more yep. visible down there. So it really the shows up, yep. Um, and I can see I've got, this flesh helps me see uneven surfaces. I didn't notice this before, but I've got some um, surfaces I want to smooth out. Just like, um, oh, any of the primers or repair work that we do, if we do reproduction fish, it's always easier to see the surface texture um, with a little bit of flat colored paint on it, whether it's primer gray or or a white or flat black. Um, all of this works pretty well. Okay. Remember, Crystal Miller, if you're watching, tune in and say something so we know. Otherwise, your giveaway is going to go to another person that is watching live. So make sure you stay in and watch because we're going to be giving it away here in about five minutes. At this time, I'm also going to spray inside the nostril. Um, just to take out that dead skin look. Come over that side a little bit. Holy cow, I'm running out of time. <laughs> okay. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is wipe this off. Um, I'm going to put just a touch of lacquer thinner on What PSI were you using? Um, probably a little bit higher, uh, I would say 30. Um, 30, 30 pounds of pressure would be pretty fair. Um, and what this does, you can see now, the paint has settled down low into the cracks and I'm wiping it off the top. And this is just gonna help me build a little roadmap for the texture that I'm gonna build here in just a minute. Um, can you do that texture in five minutes? Um, I can do three or four dots. <laughs> <laughs> We'll give them a really good example. 
Um, and we may have to pick up a little bit next week. This is intentionally whitetail finishing part one. I think whitetail finishing part two will come back and, and catch some of this and we'll fix some. Um, we'll continue to work on this deer. You could go south um, and start to show up. Yeah, you can really see kind of the the roadmap there of, of the texture that we're going to build. And if you have really good reference material, you know that the surface of the deer's nose looks nothing like this. It's not all dried and cracked. Um, the deer nose in real life is nice and supple and um, plump. It has a, a d discerning texture to it. Um, and we've got some great reference casts and photos to go by. Um, as we build this. Anytime you're trying to recreate anything in this business, it's great to have good reference material. And um, this is a, another place that you really want to use it. So right now, real quick, I'm just going to go over this surface and I'm going to make sure and work any of that paint out of the hair. And it was lacquer paint. It was Yes. Uh, and lacquer paint is very brittle, is a brittle paint. Um, does not have a lot of elasticity to it, so it comes out of the hair really well. It, it literally breaks. It breaks down as you, as you go over it like this. So now, um, we are going to, I'm going to do some texture, and I want to seal this real quick. Lexi's asking when we are doing part two. Uh, next week, same time, same place. Every Thursday, 4.30 Thursday. Central Time, Lexi, we are live. And if you've missed any of the, we've done it for since December. So you can go to our Facebook page, Matuska Taxidermy. Make sure you're like and following because they will alert you when we go live. And then you can always go to our video portion of Facebook and watch all of the videos that we've ever done and rewatch them. I need a new one. Um, do we have a little touch pod? I got it right here. I, I'll do this. In fact, I'll just use a little bit. Well, while you're doing that, last chance, Crystal Miller, last chance. Chime in if you're watching for the giveaway. I'm going to give you 30 seconds, and we're going to go to the next person. Oh, my goodness, Crystal Miller. <laughs> Seems like a okay. common name. <laughs> Which one? Um, so this is just... Mod Podge that's been thinned down with water. Um, <laughs> uh, man down, man down. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to give a real light um, coat to the surface of this. And what that's going to do is even out some of the imperfections um, and also give us a real nice surface to texture against. And I'm actually thinking we may want to just texture this next week um, because this is going to have to dry. Um, I'm also going to give a little bit of sealer to the lower lip. We left a little bit of exposed lower lip skin. Um, Do you use anything besides Mod Podge for the nodules? Um, actually, Liquitex is another great option. Um, and we've got Liquitex here too. Um, that's a little bit thinner. Um, but uh, and the, all of this is a consistency um, at how well it works for your system. So if, mm -hmm. if you're able to do that right out of the bottle, sometimes it's a little thin. If, if it's not thick enough for you, you can leave the bottle top off and, and uh, it'll thicken up just a little bit. But Mod Podge works really well. That's kind of our go-to in the shop. But um, Liquitex is another one that um, we hear a lot about. All right. Crystal Miller is out. Maybe next time, Crystal. Oh, no. But what we have done is Tom picked a number. So we have right now 141 viewers. So 1 to 141, comment your guess of a number, and whoever's the first one to get what Tom picked will get to choose a bag. And the, again, for those of you that missed it, we have four bags. We have a Sharpen Air, which is an amazing product and will definitely save your needles. Um, we have a dandy noser, which is great finishing. We have um, a easy nose. Easy Sorry, noser, which Kristen we're going to show them next week. Easy nose um, set of four. And we have a 
tape, tape measure. measure. Yes. So those are your four options. And once Kirsten sees who picks it, we will let you know, and you Start can pick guessing. a bag, and they're you know, guessing, all right. The guess, easy noser guess. might be in next time. This one for me. Amber. <laughs> and if you have more until they guess it, you can kind of keep going. Lower, too. Monica. <laughs> oh, here we go. Ooh. Can they guess more than once or just once? Um, yeah, they, oh, you can, can guess, guess more than once. Perfect. You can guess as many times as you want. <laughs> keep going. Hire Holly. But while you guys are talking, there's a lot of people that still were asking questions about our You're school. Um, Northwest Iowa School of Taxidermy, and we do have an advanced course. So just if you didn't go to school with us, you can still come learn more from these three amazing taxidermists and take your skills to the next level. Hey, so Holly, I got a discount on your change out deer head, too, for you. Yeah, <laughs> not sure how that happened with you. Oh, man, you guys are terrible at guessing. Okay, let's go 70. Whoa, John Bellucci. He got Ooh, it? Oh, he did. Good boy, good boy, John. Oh. All right, John. There's John's a faithful listener. John, you get to pick somebody's bag. Whose bag do you want to pick? Here. We got Amber, Brett, Tom, and Mandy. Whose bag, John? John? John, John. Got a name. John? Andy, Tom, Brett, Amber. You guys can stop guessing. <laughs> or keep guessing, it's okay. The number was 62, John Bellucci, name John, your bag. Name, name, John. John, you won already. <laughs> what bag you want? All right, we're gonna pick for you. Kirsten's gonna pick for you, John. Ooh, sorry, John, but. I'm gonna try my best. Give one minute. <laughs> He's got one minute. All right. All right, Kirsten, pick for John. Who's bag? John is getting Amber's bag. Amber's bag. Dump it out. Just so they know we're not lying with what's inside these bad boys. John wins a. Oh, oh. the airliners. I so forgot to get it. Oh, I threw it in with a tape measure for you. Oh, good. Because my dad was complaining about just doing a tape measure. <laughs> Um, oh, John gets Tom's now. Okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> you can't do that. Danny knows her. Danny knows her. John, Danny knows her. John you can take your pick of the tape measure and new ear liners from Carrie or ours. What was in yours, Brett? I have the easy, easy nose set. Noser. And Mandy had the, the sharpened sharpen air. Sharpen air. air. If you, so, these will all go in next week. So, we're going to have... The easy nose set will be there. The sharpened air will still be there. And the ear liners and tape measure. So New ear liners from Carrie Cochran. Got to be live yeah. to win. Sold by we'll announce your name. Kester. So if you want to win, be the first name called at 5 o'clock every Thursday. You have to like, comment with the tag of friend, and share this post. And right here is your share button, people. You have to share. If Kirsten's going to pick your name, you have to share. Like, give us some thumbs up. That's me. Holy moly. I like it. Share, like, and tag a friend. And then you will be in the chance for the 5 o'clock drawing. And if you're not present Thursday for live, it goes to the next person watching. So fun. Cool. Thanks for watching, you guys. Thank you for watching. Every Thursday, 4.30 Central, look us up, Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. Um, Northwest Iowa School of Taxidermy, if you're interested in school, give us a call, 1-800-488-3256. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.